Welcome to 7.1 Trigonometric Identities. Number one, we're going to verify uh, the identity cosecant of theta minus sine of theta equals cotangent theta cosine of theta. So we want to use our trig functions uh, to make the left side look like the right side. So we're going to start with the basics. Cosecant is 1 over the sine. And then we have sine here. And we'll do the right side maybe in a minute. So we need a common denominator. So we're going to multiply uh, by sine over sine here to get the denominators the same. And then when we do that, it's 1 minus sine squared over the sine. Okay, and 1 minus sine squared is nothing more than cosine squared over sine. Okay, so now we split this part into cosine over sine times cosine over 1, and cosine over sine is cotangent, and then we already have our cosine, and that equals what we have here. So we just verified it. So we're going to continue to do these things until we need the formulas. So let's change everything to cosines and sines for the most part, and then we'll go from there. So cotangent is the same thing as cosine over sine, so when we multiply those together, uh, we're going to get sine plus cosine squared over sine. And we need a common denominator here, so we're going to multiply by sine over sine again. And when we do that, we get sine squared plus cosine squared all over the sine. And sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So 1 over sine is nothing more than the cosecant. And that's the same thing. Number three, now we have double angles. 2u is a double angle, but we don't need to change anything yet uh, because as long as these are all the same, it doesn't matter. All the same rules apply. So we don't need to worry about a double angle yet. So we need to look at secant squared. And we know uh, from our Pythagorean um, identities that secant squared is the same thing as tangent squared plus 1. So we're going to change secant squared to tangent squared plus 1, and then we have the minus 1 on top with it. And again, secant squared on the bottom. I'm going to leave that there for the moment. All right. So the 1s cancel out. And now we have tangent squared over secant squared. So tangent squared is the same thing as sine squared over cosine squared. And this is all over secant squared, which is 1 over cosine squared. And if your denominators are the same, we've learned that we can reduce those. And that just leaves sine squared of the same angle, which is what we have. Okay, so now let's change everything again. Sine plus 2 cosine. Cosecant is 1 over sine, so that goes here. All right, so now what do we have? We want to get the, oops, this is sine over cosine. So we need to get these things together. So let's multiply by, oops, sine over sine here, and cosine over cosine. And so we get sine squared plus 2 cosine squared all over sine cosine. Okay, so we're going to change cosine squared to 1 minus sine squared. So remember, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So 1 minus cosine squared, or 1 minus sine squared, is cosine squared. So plus 2 times uh, 1 minus sine squared. So we'll distribute the 2 through here. We get sine squared plus 2 minus 2 sine squared all over sine cosine. All right, um, so now. 1 sine squared minus 2 sine squared would be negative sine squared, negative 1 sine squared, plus 2 all over sine cosine. So now I'm going to put the sine cosine underneath each one. So negative um, sine squared over sine cosine plus 2 over sine cosine. Actually, before we do that, let's... Uh, 
let's put these together here. Let's make the negative sine squared um, 1 minus cosine squared. Okay, so we distribute that through in a negative, negative cosine squared would be a positive cosine squared. And a negative 1 plus 2 is a plus 1. That's all over sine cosine. Now put the sine cosine um, uh, under each one. So cosine squared all over sine cosine plus 1 over sine cosine. So one of the cosines in the bottom reduces with 1 on top, leaving cosine over sine, which is cotangent. And we can put the sine cosine, split it up to 1 over sine times 1 over cosine. That gives you the same thing. And 1 over sine is the cosecant, and 1 over cosine is the secant. And that's what we have here. All right, number 5. Cosecant squared. Look at your Pythagorean identities and let's solve this. A couple different ways we could do this. I'm going to change uh, the 1 plus tangent squared into secant squared. And then I'm going to make that 1 over sine squared over 1 over cosine squared. And so that is 1 over sine squared times the reciprocal. Keep change, flip. And you get cosine squared over sine squared, which is cotangent squared. And that's what we have. All right, so now we have tangent plus cotangent and cosine plus sine. And that's supposed to equal cosecant plus secant. All right. I think it might be e easier to do sine over cosine plus cosine over sine. Let's go ahead and put those together. Multiply both sides, both of those by the opposite, so sine over sine and cosine over cosine to get a common denominator. And so we get sine squared plus 1, oh, plus cosine squared, all over sine cosine. And so that's 1, because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, over the sine cosine. Okay, and again, that is... 1 over sine and 1 over cosine, that's cosecant and secant. All right, now let's do this other one here. We have cosine plus sine. So if we pull this down to this position here, cosine over 1 plus sine over 1, and we distribute this through, let's set this other one aside here, just cross that out for a second. The, on the first distribution, the cosine cancels, and we're left with 1 over sine. And on the second one, the sines cancel out, and we're left with 1 over cosine. Well, that would be cosecant plus secant, and that's our answer. Again, since all the angles are all the same, we don't need to worry that it's a triple angle. Okay, we don't need to worry about that. So we can just take those, leave those off for the moment. All right, so we want to get uh, the left side to be 2 cosecant, okay? So again, usually the side that's more complex is the best way to go, start with it. So we need a common denominator on the left side. So we're going to multiply um, the left side by 1 plus the cosine, okay? And the right uh, fraction by sine. Okay, so now you have a binomial that you have to um, foil. So 1 times 1 is 1, and that's cosine, and then cosine times 1 is cosine, cosine times cosine is cosine squared. So on the top, on the left fraction, we have 1 plus cosine squared, uh, sorry, 2 cosine, 2 cosine plus cosine squared. So it's a trinomial all over... Um, our common denominator, 1 plus cosine times the sine, okay? And then we have, um, on the top, sine squared all over the same denominator, 1 plus cosine and sine. All right, so let's put these two together under one uh, fraction. So 1 plus 2 cosine plus cosine squared plus sine squared, and there you have 1 all over the common denominator, 1 plus cosine and sine. 
So on the top again, we have 1 plus 2 cosine plus 1 all over our common uh, denominator here, 1 plus cosine and sine. Okay, so again on top, we have 2 cosine. Uh, let's make it 2 plus 2 cosine. Sorry, add these two together. 2 plus 2 cosine all over 1 plus cosine sine. All right, so if I factor out a 2 out of the top, so let's put this over here. A 2, I get 1 plus the cosine. Um, and then on the bottom, I have 1 plus cosine and sine. So the 1 plus cosines reduce out, and I'm left with 2 over the sine, which is 2 cosecant. And that's what we have there. Number 8. Both sides are fairly complex. I'm going to start with the left one because uh, it has multiple terms. And that would be sine squared over cosine squared minus sine squared over 1. Get a common denominator. Multiply by cosine squared, top and bottom. And I get sine squared minus sine squared cosine squared all over cosine squared. So if I factor out a sine squared... I get 1 minus cosine squared all over cosine squared. Now, what is 1 minus cosine squared? That would be sine squared. So I have sine squared times sine squared all over cosine squared. And there is your tangent squared times sine squared. Okay, now get a common denominator on the left. And you should notice that you have the difference of squares. And on the right here, we have 1 minus cosine, which is the difference of squares. So, oops. So what do we have? On the top, we have 1 plus cosine plus 1 minus cosine all over. This right here is the difference of squares. A plus B times A minus B it gives us A squared minus b squared. So a squared, a is 1, so a squared is 1. Uh, b squared is cosine, so that's cosine squared, and you put a minus sign between them. So this cosine here cancels with that cosine, that's truly what it means to cancel. And we have 1 plus 1, you guys give me 2 on the top, and on the bottom, 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared, which is 2 cosecant squared. Okay, again, I'm going to do the left side. Don't let the three Bs worry your little brains. That's fine. So let's see here. Let's just rewrite all of this. 1 plus 1 over sine all over 1 over cosine minus cosine over sine. So the first thing is there's a problem. Let's put all that together. Get a common denominator, which is sine over sine plus 1 over sine. So that would be... 1 plus, oh, excuse me, sine plus 1. Okay, I'm just going to write it as 1 plus sine. All over the sine. And this is all over 1 over cosine. So what are you supposed to do? Keep change flip. So 1 plus sine over sine times cosine over 1. Okay. So now we have cosine plus sine cosine all over sine. And, uh, and we still have the minus cosine over sine. Oh, look at that. We got a common denominator. So we can put those together. So we have a positive cosine and a minus cosine. So those will literally cancel out. And you're left with sine cosine all over the common denominator, which the sines reduce out, leaving cosine. Ta-da! Secant is 1 over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. And then we have cosecant is 1 over sine plus 1. So on the left, we can put these two together, 1 minus sine all over cosine. And we get a sine over sine, that's 1. Get a common denominator. So that's 1 plus sine on the top all over cosine. I'm sorry, that's 1 over, all over sine. 
Okay, so on top, this is the difference of squares again. So that's 1 minus sine squared, all over cosine sine. 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared, and that will reduce with one of the cosines in the denominator, leaving cosine over sine, or cotangent. All right, let's just keep breaking it down. Cosine over sine is your cotangent. This is all the top part here. That's sine over cosine. And that's all over sine plus cosine. All right, let's put the top together by multiplying by a common denominator. And we get cosine squared minus sine squared all over sine cosine or cosine sine, doesn't matter. And that is all over the denominator, sine plus cosine. All right, so now let's take the top, cosine squared minus sine squared, over sine cosine times the reciprocal of the bottom, so 1 over sine plus cosine. Okay, so I notice this is the difference of squares. So that is cosine minus sine times cosine plus sine. That's on the top times the 1. And on the bottom, we have uh, sine cosine times sine plus cosine, which happens to be that right there. So those reduce out. And I'm left with, let's put this up here, cosine minus sine all over sine cosine. So if we put all this together under uh, individual uh, denominators, we get cosine over sine cosine minus sine over sine cosine. Look what happens. The cosines reduce, the sines reduce. We have 1 over the sine, which is cosecant, and we have 1 over cosine, which is secant. Okay, so I see difference of squares again here. Uh, that would be cosecant squared minus cotangent squared times cosecant squared plus cotangent squared, which is what we have on the right side. We have that. So we got to get rid of this left one here. Well, what is the left one? That's 1 over sine squared minus cosine squared over sine squared. Okay, so 1 minus cosine squared all over sine squared. Well, 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. And sine squared over sine squared is 1. And we're left with the cosecant squared plus cotangent squared, which is what is on the right side. Okay, now we look at a couple things here. Uh, again, don't let the double angles fool you yet. We're not to that point. So we have cosine to the fourth plus sine squared. All right, so cosine to the fourth. And sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So what do we really have? Cosine to the fourth. Uh, let's do minus here. Minus cosine squared plus 1. Okay. So now I look at this, and I am going to subtract this over here. So I see a cosine to the fourth. I'm subtracting a cosine squared from another minus cosine squared, so that would be minus 2 cosine squared plus 1, and that's going to equal sine to the fourth. I see that I have a trinomial that can be factored. It can't be factored here, but if I move the cosine squared over, it then can be. So this factors into cosine squared minus 1 times cosine squared minus 1. And cosine squared minus 1, all right, so sine squared plus cosine squared, equals 1. So cosine squared minus 1 is negative sine squared times another negative sine squared. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and sine squared times sine squared is sine to the fourth. Cosine of beta over 1 minus sine of beta. Both sides are complex. It doesn't matter which way you go. You could do both at the same time if you wanted to. Okay, so I really can't do anything with this yet. I'm going to go ahead and start with the right side. 
Secant is 1 over cosine. Tangent is sine over cosine. So now I get 1 plus the sine all over the same denominator. On the left side, I still have cosine and 1 minus sine. I can go ahead and multiply both sides by a common denominator. This side would have to be multiplied by cosine over cosine, or just cosine, sorry. And this side would have to be multiplied by 1 minus sine. So I can multiply um, as long as I multiply everything. So again, if I multiplied by 1 minus sine, since I did it on the right, and cosine as well, because I did that on the left, your 1 minus sines cancel out, your cosines reduce out, and I'm left with cosine squared equal to, this is the difference of squares, 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared. So now we're manipulating left and right at the same time as equations. So let's go on from there. So let's make uh, cosecant. This is 1 over 1 over sine minus cosine over sine. And we get um, 1 over 1 minus cosine over sine, which is really, keep change flip, sine over 1 minus cosine. The right side is 1 over sine plus cosine over sine. Okay, and that becomes 1 plus cosine over sine. And again, do these equal each other? If we multiply both sides by the common denominator, 1 minus cosine and the sine, those are both denominators, 1 minus cosine and the sine, sine reduces, 1 minus cosine reduces, and we're left with sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared, the difference of squares, and that is sine squared. Okay, so now we have tangent squared over secant plus 1. Let's make tangent squared. Um, tangent squared plus 1 is the secant squared. So we'll do uh, tangent squared is secant squared minus 1. So you have secant plus 1 on the bottom. Well, this is the difference of squares. So that's secant minus 1 and secant plus 1. And you have secant plus 1 on the bottom. And, of course, those reduce out, leaving secant minus 1. And secant is 1 over the cosine. Minus 1. Get a common denominator, and you get 1 minus the cosine all over cosine, which is what we have. Cotangent of x is, there's nothing squared there, so we're not going to use the Pythagorean identities. Cosine over sine. And cosecant is 1 over the sine plus 1 again, so get a common denominator before we keep change flip. And so our denominator right here is 1 plus sine all over sine. So now let's do the keep change flip of the whole thing here. So cosine over sine times the reciprocal sine 1 plus sine. Okay? We put these together, and we see the sines reduce out, and we have cosine over 1 plus sine. Okay, Okay. at this point, I'm going to try the right side. Um, I could do some reciprocal stuff on the left, but I don't want to go too far. When you get stuck, try the right side to see if you can get close to it, if that jars some memory of yours of what you could do. So cosecant here is 1 minus, or excuse me, 1 over the sine minus 1, and cotangent is cosine over sine. And on the top, I'll do sine over sine, because that's the same thing as 1. And I have 1 minus the sine over sine on the top, all over cosine over sine. So now we're going to keep change flip with that. So 1 minus the sine over sine times sine over cosine. And what do we have? The sines cancel out. And this is 1 minus sine over cosine. So if we multiply both sides by common denominators here, cosine and 1 plus sine, that's your common denominator, and cosine 
and one plus sign. Okay, the one plus sign reduces out there and cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And over here, the cosines reduce out and one minus sine times one plus sine is the difference of squares or one minus sine squared. And that is cosine squared, check. All right, so now we have cosine over sine minus one. This is the top here, so we get a common denominator, and that's going to be sine over sine. And then on the bottom, again, we have cosine over sine plus one, which is sine over sine. Keep change flip, or first of all, let's uh, simplify. Cosine minus sine on the top, all over sine. On the bottom, if we keep change flip, the sine is going to be on top, and then you have cosine plus sine on the bottom. So the sines reduce out, and we have cosine minus sine all over cosine plus sine. Now, I can't do anything with that yet, so I'm going to look at the right side, and that's 1 minus sine over cosine. And that's cosine over cosine. Okay. And on the bottom, I have one plus uh, sine over cosine. And again, get a common denominator, cosine over cosine. And so what do we really have here? The top is cosine minus sine all over cosine. And we do the keep change flip. The cosine will be on the top. And on the bottom, we have cosine plus sine. And so those cancel out, and we're left with cosine minus sine all over cosine plus sine. And that's what we have. Same thing on both sides. And number 20, 1 plus 1 over cosine all over sine plus sine over cosine. Okay, get common denominators. Cosine over cosine is 1. And multiply by cosine here over cosine. And on top we get cosine, whoops, cosine plus one all over cosine. On the bottom we have sine cosine plus sine all over cosine. Keep, yeah, keep change flip, cosine plus one over cosine times cosine over uh, let's leave this as, let's keep the factored form out, 1 plus cosine here. If we factor out a sine, we get 1 plus cosine. Okay, and now the cosines reduce, and the 1 plus cosines reduce, and we're left with 1 over sine, which is the cosecant. Difference of squares here, so sine squared minus cosine squared times sine squared plus cosine squared. All right, and this is the difference of squares. So that becomes sine minus cosine and sine plus cosine times the sine squared plus cosine squared. Okay, well, sine squared plus cosine squared is one. So one times this is just this. So that's what we have, which is, again, What's above it? Sine squared minus cosine squared. So I went just a little bit too far. Just one step too many. All right, now I see a trinomial. I see x to the fourth plus two x squared y squared plus y to the fourth. So that might be too much for you, but uh, really what it is is x uh, squared plus y squared, x squared plus y squared, all equal to 1, okay? Because if, uh, if you distribute, you're going to get exactly what we just said, all right? So now what is all of this with the sines and the cosines in there? So this is sine squared, this is cosine squared, and this is sine squared, and this is cosine squared. Well, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And 1 times 1 is 1. Check. Let's see um, the difference of squares here. So that's tangent squared minus secant squared. And tangent squared plus secant squared. 
And tangent squared is, if we remember, tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. So tangent squared is secant squared minus 1, and that's minus secant squared there. And a secant squared minus secant squared is gone, so you're left with negative 1 on the left side there. And the second parentheses, we have tangent squared plus secant squared. Okay, and again, tangent squared is secant squared, oops, um, minus 1, and then plus secant squared. All right, so inside here we get 2 secant squared and a minus 1, and then we distribute the negative 1 from the outside, and we get 1 plus 2 secant, uh, that should be minus, minus secant squared, 2 secant squared. And that's what we have here. Okay, again, um, looking at these, since they're different exponents, let's go ahead and factor out a secant squared. That'll help. And then we get secant squared minus 1. And secant squared minus 1 is tangent squared. Okay, so now we have secant squared, and that's tangent squared. And secant squared, we just said, was tangent squared plus 1 times that tangent squared. So if we distribute that through, we get tangent to the 4th plus tangent squared, which is what that is. All right, secant plus tangent, and that quantity is squared. And let's go ahead and see what we have here if we actually square that out. Secant squared plus 2 secant tangent plus tangent squared. If you do that, you'll get a trinomial, okay? And so what do we have? Secant squared is tangent squared plus 1, okay? Now we don't need parentheses around that. Plus 2 secant tangent. And I'll just leave it as tangent squared there. So now we have 2 tangent squared and plus 2 secant tangent plus 1. Okay. Now let's go ahead and break this up a little bit. Secant is 1 over cosine, and tangent is sine over cosine. Okay, and tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. And this is 2 sine over cosine squared plus 1. Okay, so this is 2, and then we have sine squared plus sine all over cosine squared. And if we make this cosine squared over cosine squared, let's see what happens. Um, and then we have, let's put it back into 2 sine squared plus 2 sine. Cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. And this is all over the same denominator here. So 2 sine squared minus sine squared is just 1 sine squared. And you have a plus 2 sine there and a plus 1 all over cosine squared, which is 1 minus sine squared. I'm just going to change it because I think we're going to need to. On the top, this is a trinomial. You have factors. That's sine plus 1 uh, times sine plus 1. And on the bottom here, we have 1 minus sine squared. Okay, 1 minus sine squared is the difference of squares. All right, so I'm going to rearrange these things here so they match what we have over here. So 1 plus sine on the top and 1 plus sine all over 1 minus sine, 1 plus sine. The difference of squares gives you that. Those reduce out, and that's our answer. That was a long way to get there, but it worked. Okay, so secant squared plus tangent squared. A whole bunch of different ways you can go when you're doing these. That's why it can uh, get kind of cumbersome. Um, you can almost never go wrong by changing everything to sines and cosines, but it can get very complex when you do that. Okay.
So this is where it gets really weird. Um, we have 1 plus sine squared on the top over cosine squared. I see we have something that looks like the difference of squares there. So that's 1 minus sine squared and 1 minus 1 plus sine squared. And we still have the secant to the fourth there. Okay, and that's the same thing as 1 over cosine to the fourth. So if I multiplied the left side uh, by 1 minus sine squared over 1 minus sine squared, that's manipulative to give me the difference of squares, which turns out being 1 minus sine to the fourth. And on the bottom, I have cosine squared times, and 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. So now I have 1 minus sine to the fourth over cosine to the fourth, which that comes up here as secant to the fourth. Very crazy identities. Okay, now we have a cube here. Um, cosine, obviously sine squared plus cosine squared is one, one cubed is one. Done. Um, not really sure what they were thinking on that one. And uh, I guess we'll do these two separately. Um, I can't do anything on the left unless you kind of know what to do. You could do a difference of squares by multiplying the top and bottom by one plus cosine. Let's go ahead and use the right side first. That's one over sine plus cosine over sine. And that becomes one plus cosine over sine. And on the left, we still have sine and one minus cosine. Okay, the only way to, to change all of this is if we introduce the difference of squares here. So if I say we're going to multiply by one plus cosine on the top and bottom, Okay, on the bottom, uh, we get, um, oops, 1 minus cosine squared, which is sine squared. On the top, we have 1 plus the cosine times the sine. And now you see that 1 sine reduces with 1 on the bottom, leaving 1 on the bottom. And we have 1 plus cosine over sine. So that's a little trick when things are reciprocals of each other, but the signs may be different. You might want to introduce uh, the difference of squares, and it's pretty hard to do. Now number 29, all we have on the right is secant. That really doesn't help us too much for now. So let's start with the left side. One plus one over sine, that's cosecant, and we have cosine over sine plus cosine. So on the top, we need a common denominator, so we're going to multiply that by sine over sine. And on the bottom, you need a common denominator again, so multiply this by sine over sine. So what do we end up with on top? We get sine plus 1 all over sine. On the bottom, we have cosine plus cosine sine all over sine. So we're going to do a keep change flip, sine plus 1 over sine. And the reciprocal, sine over cosine plus cosine sine. The sines reduce. Here we're going to factor out a cosine. And we get 1 plus sine on the inside, which reduces with that one. And we're left with 1 over cosine overall, which is the secant. Check. All right. We have the difference of cubes here. So you keep... You take the cubed roots, and the minus sign goes first, and then you have plus signs in the other side. Uh, you square the first, square the last, and multiply the two together, cosine, sine. Okay, so now what do we really have? Uh, we have cosine minus sine, and again, this is just all on the top here. And cosine squared plus, cos plus sine squared is 1, so that's 1 plus, I'm going to write it like this, sine, cosine all over the cosine minus sine, which that reduces with that, leaving just 1 plus sine cosine. 
and that is what we have here. Check. Okay, now we have to the fourth, but notice this is the difference of squares formula. So a squared minus b squared, it gives me, comes from a minus b times a plus b. So the, co, uh, the exponents on these are the square roots of these. Okay, so what we have is we have um, is something uh, a little strange here. If I just wrote this out, uh, let's call this a and this b and this a and this b, okay? So we have four of each of these, a minus b, a minus b, a minus b, and a minus b, times these four, a plus b, a plus b, a plus b, and a plus b. So I can rearrange all multiplication and put each of these with its counterpart. So I have a minus b times a plus b, and I have four sets of those. Okay, so I could just say this right here, and that's the exact same thing. So what is this really that I have? I have cosecant minus the cotangent times the cosecant plus the cotangent, all of that to the fourth power, but this right here is the difference of squares. So you square the first, so that's cosecant squared, put a minus sign, and cotangent squared. All of that is to the fourth power. Well, cosecant squared is 1 plus cotangent squared. And you're subtracting a cotangent squared. Well, cotangent squared minus cotangent squared is nothing, so you have 1 left to the fourth power is 1. Check. Okay, so now don't mistake this. This is a plus sign in between, so we're not multiplying. This is not the difference of squares here. Sure does look like it, but it's not. All right, so I have two of these things. I have a cosine of t minus b sine of t. A cosine of t. I guess we don't need to put the t's in. Uh, b sine of t. And then we have two of the pluses. So a sine plus b cosine. A sine plus b cosine. Watch what happens when we distribute a squared cosine squared uh, minus a b cosine sine minus a b cosine sine plus b squared sine squared. Okay, so that is a squared cosine squared minus 2ab, I'm going to switch this to sine cosine, it's just easier to write, 2ab cosine sine plus b squared sine squared. Okay, now that's the first part. The second part, do the same thing. You get a squared sine squared, I have to write a little bit smaller here, plus AB sine cosine plus AB sine cosine plus B squared cosine squared. All right, that's the second part, so let's put all that together. That's A squared sine squared, and you have plus 2AB sine cosine and plus B squared cosine squared. So since it's a plus, you distribute the plus through, and there's no more parentheses. So I see a squared cosine squared, all right, and a squared sine squared. So I'm going to put those together. So a squared cosine squared plus a squared sine squared, okay? And I'll use the back ones here, plus b squared sine squared plus b squared cosine squared. And those are not gone. And the minus 2ab sine cosine plus 2ab sine cosine, those cancel out, literally. So the first term I factor out an a squared, and I get cosine squared plus sine squared. 
factor out of b squared out of the last two, and I get sine squared plus cosine squared. And those are both 1's. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. And I'm left with a squared plus b squared. Ta-da! Okay. Now this is actually coming from your uh, uh, angle additions uh, of sines of different letters, different degrees. Um, the top one is actually sine of alpha plus beta uh, in your formula sheet. But instead of using that, we're trying to uh, show how you can derive one side over the other. So let's start with the right side, and that's sine of alpha. Now you need your letters, your, your degree symbols, because they're all different. So sine of alpha over cosine of alpha plus sine of beta over cosine of beta all over 1 minus sine of alpha cosine of alpha sine of beta cosine of beta. Okay, so uh, keep change flip um, sine of alpha. Uh, actually, why don't we go ahead and put like, uh, we need a common denominator here. So on the top, I'm going to multiply the left side by cosine of beta, top and bottom, and the right side cosine of alpha, top and bottom. And you, if you recognize that, that's what you have on the left side. All right, so let's rewrite the top. The top is going to be sine of alpha, cosine of beta, plus uh, sine of beta, cosine of alpha, which is the same thing. I just rearranged it a little bit. All over the bottom, which is sine of alpha, I'm sorry, that would actually be cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. All right, now the bottom, you got to put this together, so we need a common denominator. So the left has, the one has to change to cosine of alpha, cosine of beta, over cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. Now that the denominators are the same, uh, the bottom is going to be cosine alpha, cosine beta, sine alpha, sine beta, this is all, I'm sorry, minus, there should be a minus in there, minus sine alpha, sine beta, which is what we have right here on the bottom, and that is over the common denominator of cosine of alpha, cosine of beta. And what did you learn? If your denominators are the same, they're gone. And the this is exactly what we have on the left side. So check, it's done. Very crazy stuff here. Um, again, sine over cosine. Now you need your letters because they're different. Minus sine over cosine. And we need common denominator. This is just, I'm just going to do the top first here. Okay, let's get a common denominator. Multiply by cosine b on the left and cosine u on the right. And we end up with sine u cosine v minus sine v cosine u all over cosine v cosine u. That's the top, not the bottom. Uh, let's write it over here, 1 plus sine of u over cosine u times sine v cosine v. So the common denominator there is cosine u cosine v all over cosine u cosine v. That's the same thing as saying 1. So what do we have? You have in the bottom cosine of u cosine v plus sine u sine v and that's over uh, the common denominator cosine u cosine v which those two are the same and so what do we have now we have the sine of u cosine of v minus sine v cosine of u all over cosine of u cosine v plus sine u sine v.
So now let's look at the right side. And cotangent is cosine over sine. Again, use your letters. And cosine u over sine u. And this is all over the same type of stuff. Make sure you get this done. Sine v plus, got a good common denominator. So that's going to be sine u sine v over itself. All right, so what do we have? On the top there, you got a common denominator multiplied by sine u over sine u and sine v sine v. So what do we have on top? We have sine u cosine v minus um, sine v cosine of u. And that would all be over um, cosine u cosine v plus sine u sine v. And that's all over. Uh, oh, I forgot the denominator, but they're the same. These are the same on the top and the bottom, so those would cancel out. And so that's what we have, left side equals right side. So let's just stop here. I think 34 of these problems is enough. We'll just split this up in a couple days. So hopefully, um, hopefully you got something out of this, and we'll go on from here.